The University of Louisville football program handed out a couple of key 2023 offers over the past 48 hours. We will discuss both of those prospects and more on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Global Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I um, also do some PA announcing for the for the University of Imperial Sports. I want to take this time to say thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, including YouTube and now WHAS 11 plus uh, five days a week, your team every day. We're going to be discussing two key recent offers that the University of Louisville football program handed out. Those offers went out to highly ranked four-star defensive back Roderick Pleasant and three-star Minnesota commit Zaquan Bryan. And then in the final segment, we will discuss 24-7 sports uh, article that came out, the 2023 Freaks list, listing 50 of the freakiest college football recruits. A handful of Louisville uh, commits and some Louisville targets were included in that list. So let's start out uh, by discussing Roderick Pleasant. Um, It is Friday, you all. Happy Friday. Um, We are just over a a week away uh, until the... Uh, first game for the Louisville Cardinals. We're feeling good. Got the Locked On Louisville or Locked On Podcast Network merch on today. So I'm feeling good. Hopefully you all are feeling good as well. First segment, like I mentioned, we're going to be discussing Roderick Pleasant. Uh, Pleasant received an offer on Wednesday, I believe, from the Louisville program. He is ranked as the 82nd best prospect in the 2023 class, according to uh, 24-7 Sports, the 8th best at the cornerback position in the eighth best in the state of California. The Gardena, California native has picked up a ton of offers um, seemingly just in the past 48 to 72 hours. Not only did he get an offer from the University of Louisville, but he received an offer from Miami um, at the end of July, got an offer from Wisconsin, uh, but is a player that, hey, a lot of the top programs are after, and rightfully so. He is revered as possibly one of, if not the fastest player in the 2023 cycle. And you guessed it, he landed on the um, the 2023 Freaks list that was written by Andrew Ivins of 24-7 Sports. Um, I believe he landed at number 19. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to read what Ivins wrote Um Gardena, California, uh, Junipero Serra cornerback Roderick Pleasant is believed to be the fastest recruit in the class of 2023, and that's obviously good enough for a spot on the freaks list. Back in May, Pleasant shattered a 37-year-old California state record with a 10.14 in the 100-meter dash. A week later, he captured gold in both the 100 and 200-meter dash at the CIF finals. Pleasant might not be the biggest corner, but he knows how to put himself in position to make plays and opened up his senior season last week with a pick six. Boston College hosted Pleasant for an official visit back in June. He previously put the Eagles in a league group along with Oregon, USC, Penn State, UCLA, and California schools like Miami, Wisconsin, however, have since offered. Obviously, the Louisville Cardinals have made that um, that list as well in terms of the offers. Um, overall, just a big time recruit in, in the state of California that Louisville is looking to seemingly do the impossible and reel in another highly rated prospect for the Flyville 23 class, something that, you know, they have continued to build over the past couple months. And like I mentioned, when the Cardinals lost two key defensive back recruits in um, Martel Height, who ended up committing to Vanderbilt, the four-star prospect committed a couple months ago, and then a local Louisville Mail High School um, product um, Jeremiah Collins, who ended up transferring down to Tennessee to finish out his high school career. <clears throat> he decommitted from the program. 
I want to say in June. If not, it was early July, but I want to say it was June. So you lose two defensive back prospects. Um, and now you you have the opportunity to to go out and really, really go get one of the best players in the country. I know that they've been after Cole Martin, the Oregon commit, who's just outside of the top 100. Um, you know, we're going to talk about Zaquan Bryan, another guy that they've recently offered, um, who's a Minnesota commit. But overall, this is going to be an uphill battle as everyone should prepare themselves for. Assuming that Louisville can get in the mix here, the, the number one key thing – uh, for the Cardinals, and this is kind of the prerequisite for me in terms of um, uh, really getting involved in a recruitment is getting that respective recruit on campus for a visit, uh, whether that's an unofficial or an official, uh, depending on uh, what class they are in. Obviously, with Roderick Pleasant being a 2023 or being in the 2023 cycle, it would be imperative to get him uh, on campus for an official visit this fall, uh, most notably with with some of the other players from California. I know uh, current Cardinal commitments have taken to social media, especially on Twitter, to um, you know express their uh satisfaction with the offer deandre moore jr aaron williams madden sanker um, if not pierce clarkson you would assume is going to also um, be in the mix in terms of trying to use social media as a recruiting tool um, but it, it's going to come down to being able to get him on a visit and like i like i said there is no shortness of suitors out there you know there's teams like ucla um you know, Oregon, Penn State, he made the visit to Boston College, Miami offered, and uh, by judging, I don't like to put a lot of my nose itching for some unknown reason. It's absolutely frustrating me, so I apologize for the uh, the distraction. But, um, you know, you can't put too much into social media, but it seemed like uh, uh, Roderick was especially excited about the um, – the offer from Miami as well in the way that, you know, Mario Cristobal and company have been recruiting down in South beach. It's hard to dismiss the Miami hurricanes at this point. So um, ultimately, like Ivan said, he's not the biggest cornerback out there listed at five foot 11, 180 pounds, um, but does a great job all over the field. Um, it is, is kind of a, a gadget type of player in which they, um, you know, uh, Junipero, Sarah, I, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, uses him in a multitude of different ways, both on the offensive end as a receiver, also in the backfield, um, and on special teams as a return man, but also as a defensive back, either playing, you know, in the in the, um, in the the slot or also out, out on the boundary. Uh, so ultimately, when you watch his film at cornerback, not necessarily the biggest guy, but has a ton of athleticism, and speed, which helps him, you know, uh, you know, being only five eleven, having that speed, or you know, he's not really getting burned down the field, right? So I know you have to backpedal. Uh, you know, there's a science to it. Uh, being a defensive back, that makes it one of the toughest positions to be able to really perform at a high level. Uh, but he does a good job of uh, just contending with passes. Uh, does a good job of of um, competing on 50-50 balls. Uh, can high point the football really well for his size. And obviously that speed is is something that you cannot overlook here. So it could be one of those instances to where he is immediately used as a return man wherever he goes. Uh, but this is a huge um, you know, recruitment that Louisville is going to try to get into. The big thing here that we need to focus on is can the Cardinals get pleasant on an official visit? Um, you know, as seemingly as tough as it may be to go into the state of California to reel in some of these bigger recruits, well, they've done so so far. I mean, Pierce Clarkson, Aaron Williams, DeAndre Moore Jr., Jalil McLean, Jamari Johnson, the list goes on. Um, so I'm not saying that it's impossible because they've shown that they've done it time and time again in this exact recruiting class but it i will say it's improbable just because of you know it, it's gonna be hard to you, you seemingly it's hard to take a west coast player out of the west coast so it's gonna be hard to compete with you know ucla oregon you know penn state is a top program miami trying to get into the mix as well wisconsin um he's taking a visit to boston college and who knows who else tries to get into the mix so an uphill battle for the louisville cardinals but um, could possibly contend for early playing time right away. Um, the good thing is with the Louisville Cardinals, you know, Jarvis Brownlee Jr., Quincy Riley, unless 
either of them go to the NFL after this season, you know, both of those guys are looking like they are going to be, from what we're hearing in, in, in fall camp, is that they're both looking really, really good. And, um, you know, they could be the starting cornerbacks uh, in 2023. So maybe you don't need a cornerback to come in and be a starter. But with the way that Louisville likes to play defensive backs all over the field um, in versatile situations, I think that Pleasant would be a player that – could be in contention for immediate playing time, whether that be on special teams right away or as a slot cornerback and using his speed on some smaller receivers that have a ton of of quickness. That's certain certainly going to help out because it seems like the um, instead of like the bigger receivers uh, and that, and I mean that's still a. Um, you know, a focal point in a lot of offenses, but it seems like uh, there's a trend in college football and football in general to where the uh, the smaller, quicker receiver has never been more valued than they are right now in 2022. Thanks to guys like you know Tyreek Hill and company. So uh, you know, having a player that is that fast that doesn't get burned on those deep routes because he's likely the fastest player on the field. Hey, that's big time news. Um, if the Louisville Cardinals were able to reel him in, but obviously going to be an uphill battle. The key thing to focus on here, if you're a Louisville fan, see if he is going to make a visit to Louisville. If so, I think that the Cardinals have a very, very good shot in this one. I think that they could definitely be into the mix, but at the end of the day, you have to you you know, get a visit, in my opinion. So uh, moving forward, another uh, prospect that they offered was three-star uh, defensive back Zaquan Bryan, who is a current Minnesota commit. We will discuss, um, you know, what interests me about what Brian brings to the table on the field here in just a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, golf, and esports. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline where the game starts. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On the Louisville your first listen every day. Uh, just a reminder, the Ultimate College Football Preview is here, a seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts, and Odyssey College Football Insiders. It's everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. Search for Ultimate College Football Preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. But moving right on along into discussing the second offer uh, that the Cardinals handed out um, in, in the past 48 to 72 hours, three-star defensive back from Savannah, Georgia, Zaquan Bryan, who committed to Minnesota back in mid-April. Um, he's a player that, you know, Louisville, like I mentioned, they're looking to – take a couple more defensive back recruits in this class. Brian is a player that could, you know, likely be played either as a cornerback or has shown signs that he could play a safety as well. But one thing that interests me is the fact that he is a very, very solid two-way player. He's one of the, you know, one of the more dynamic two-way players in the country on three recruits, which not necessarily a lot of Louisville fans are, are fond of that service. Um, they've talked about Zaquan Bryan as possibly being a, a four-star caliber guy. Um, he plays track and baseball as well. So he not only plays both sides of the football, but also plays track and baseball as well. Um, he was a regional qualifier as a sophomore in both the 100 and 200 meter dash, as well as the triple jump um, in the Atlanta area or the Atlanta journal constitution was uh, named uh, all state honors. Um, so looking at some of these, um, they also got a, a state title um, at his high school. Uh, let's see. He caught 95 passes for just under 1,400 yards, had 17 total touchdowns, had 51 tackles on the defensive end, seven pass breakups, and two interceptions. Um, uh, so very, very solid receiver, but also very solid defensive back as well. And it seems like he's being projected as a defensive back recruit at the next level. Um, but still, it, it does make you wonder of you know having that versatility as uh, of both being able to play a cornerback and safety position because when you watch him play, he has you know solid hands. Being a receiver, does a good job of um, you know staying with his man. A good job of high pointing the football with his five foot eleven frame, and just overall a great job of sniffing out um, you know opposing play calling, and, and uh, really solid in terms of 
being able to, um, you know, be solid in terms of uh, footwork and technique and tackling. So it's no secret as to why he's being projected as a defensive back prospect. But also it does make you wonder because he's playing in a very, very solid uh, competition-filled state of Georgia down in Savannah. Um, and, you know, he's hauling in 17 – or 17 – uh, 17 total touchdowns, uh, just under 1,400 yards uh, as a receiver. So that does make you wonder, uh, maybe he gets into um, a college fall camp and they think, hey, maybe we want to see see this guy at receiver or, or something along that nature, just kind of food for thought. But ultimately going to be hard to take him away from from Minnesota. It seems like you know his his commitment to Minnesota is firm. The main thing here for Louisville, obviously, w- along with Roderick Pleasant, I feel like a broken record here when I'm saying it, it's getting a prospect on campus, getting a recruit on campus and trying to get into the mix here. Um, they're, obviously, it seems like they're going to try to lay the groundwork to get a, a visit here um, in the next couple months leading up to signing day to try to get him to be a possible flip. Um, ranked as the 784th best prospect in the, in the country, according to the 24-7 sports composite. Um, has a handful of Power 5 offers, not just uh, from Minnesota. Has offers from North Carolina, um, Iowa State, uh, and company. Um, so it, it seems like he's a little bit um, under the radar as a prospect, but you know, being able to be a, a solid player on both ends of the football, it really just depends on, on – Louisville trying to make a ground here in this recruitment. Um, overall, I, I think that Brian would be solid on either side of the ball for the record. Um, but in this instance, I think uh, with Louisville zoning in on a defensive back or a couple defensive backs, um, has a solid, um, has had some solid um, um, contact with the recruiting staff and. Um, Greg Gasparato, the outside linebackers coach, the former safeties coach. So it makes you wonder, is he going to be, you know, recruited more as a cornerback, as a safety? Uh, he has that versatility. So it's something to focus on here. So, uh, but obviously it's going to be a matter of if they can get Zaquan Bryan on a commitment. So for the final segment of the show, we will break down the 2023 freaks list from 247sports.com where various Louisville commits and Louisville targets made the list. We already talked about Roderick Pleasant, who landed at 19. We will discuss the others here in the final segment of the show. Um, but once again, I want to say thank you all for making Locked on Louisville your first lesson every day. Um, something new, not only are we on YouTube and all streaming services audio-wise, we are now being added to the WHAS 11 online Uh, website under the sports section you can watch all of these episodes at whas 11 as well some exciting news coming for the podcast uh, hopefully that i'm able to share soon so um moving right along into uh talking about the uh 50 of the freakiest college football recruits uh piece that came out from 24 7 sports it is a quote-unquote a play on what the athletics bruce feldman does every year with his call with his college football freaks list um Various uh, attributes land various prospects on the freaks list, such as insane speed, like um, like uh, Roderick Pleasant, also athleticism, um, strength, so on and so forth. Various Cardinals landed on this list. We'll start out with the lowest on the list. That is Jamari Johnson, ranked at 42, the current Louisville um, athlete a current commit that is listed as an athlete projected as a tight end at the next level. Ivan says this, is he a tight end or a defensive lineman? What about a future offensive lineman? It's anyone's guess, but there's a lot to like when it comes to his frame and functional, uh, functional athleticism, the year round athlete who also plays basketball and throws shot put measured in at just over six foot four, 255 pounds. Um, he has an 82 inch wingspan to go along with size 16 shoes. Um, and he also, um, is a player that ha- has a solid arm, can throw it 72 yards in the air at the Steve Clarkson quarterback retreat. Um, he used to be a quarterback, but uh, is more projected as a pass catcher. Um, it's huge. Got the offer from Alabama. I know a lot of people, um, you know, within the Louisville recruiting circles that I've uh, seen screenshots from have said that, you know, um, yeah, you always should worry about Alabama, but they do feel solid at this point about um, where his commitment lies. But, you know, you know, possibly one of the top tight ends. You know, tight ends nowadays with Kyle Pitts and uh, Eric Gilbert. Um, you know, the list goes on. Marshawn Ford being in that mix as well. Having guys that are agile enough to be wide receivers, 
but also, you know, big enough to be tight ends. And I think Deuce, Deuce Robinson, he's on that list as well. Um, but uh, Jamar Johnson being on the list is huge here for the Cardinals. And that just shows you that combination of um, overall talent mixed with that athleticism and size. So that's something to focus on here. Um, another Louisville commit that made the list, I think this is the other only Louisville commit, that's Ruben Owens, the number one running back in the country, ranked at 25. Uh Ivan says, hey, look, this guy was a, a lock to make this year's list, right? He's a decorated track and field athlete with a pair of long jump bronze medals hanging on the wall. He's also managed to break the all-important 11-second mark in the 100-meter dash multiple times. Um, he calls himself uh, the Black Unicorn on social media, has put some miles on the tires, having already rushed for over 5,300 yards at El Campo, but hasn't shown any signs of wear and tear and was an extremely difficult cover on the 7-on-7 seven -seven circuit this spring and summer. A one-time Texas commit, Owens shocked the world when he committed to Louisville back in June. Uh, and then there, there's the the comment, he's a potential flip target for many because people can't imagine a five-star from Texas going to Louisville. Hey, it is um, unprecedented, but what Louisville's doing right now is not necessarily normal for what we're used to seeing. But, um, yeah, so you have that that size and, and stamina and endurance a, as a running back, and he, he's been a guy that uh, every time he touches the ball, it seems like when you watch his film, more highlights than not are touchdowns. It seems like he has his own 10-minute highlight film of just touchdowns. But one aspect of his game that's going to be really, really – um, you know, overlooked is his ability to be solid as a pass catcher. And that is the aspect of things that I'm focusing on. Like, okay, um, yeah, Ruben Owens is dynamic a as a traditional running back, but being able to be that dynamic out of the backfield as well as a receiving back, ooh, that's going to be tough to guard um, in the collegiate ranks. So um, this is one of those things to where I'm like, okay, yeah, it's obvious that the number one running back is going to land on the freaks list. And um, obviously for good measure ranking inside of the top 25, excuse me. So moving right on along, we mentioned Roderick Pleasant um, as number 19. That, that's one of those instances to where it's like, Hey, look, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, having that speed and, and um, just overall athleticism is huge listed as one of the most, if not the fastest, recruit in the country what would be a huge addition to the program so um uh the other louisville target along with jamar johnson along with reuben owens along with roger roderick pleasant that uh made the uh 24 7 sports freaks list is the only other target he's the highest ranked louisville target on the list right now that is and i've alluded to it tight end deuce robinson uh, could be a wide receiver at the next level, and I think that that's actually what Louisville is recruiting him as. But hey, uh, Andrew Ivans alludes to the fact that this could be like the this could be like the Kyler Murray situation. He he goes on to write, "Will it be the NFL or MLB for Deuce?" That's a serious question. The six and six foot six and a half, two hundred thirty pound Robinson recently joined Kyler Murray and A.J. Brown as the only high schoolers ever to be named Under Armour All-Americans in both football and baseball. The number, the nation's number one ranked tight end tore it up in the batter's box this summer, tagging elite pitcher after elite pitcher at showcase events like the Area Code Games. That has led to some Aaron Judge comparisons. While Robinson could very well end up making millions as an outfielder one day, he's expected to eventually just focus on football, which is why he didn't play baseball this spring at Phoenix Pinnacle in Arizona. Robinson has official visits set up with Texas, Georgia, and Alabama. He's already took one to USC. Obviously, um, it seems like this one is pretty straightforward here. Being a, a guy that could pursue professional careers in baseball and also football is incredible. Not only having the size to hit the ball real, you know, to hit the ball really well and having that talent, but also as that translates over into football, having the size to be a solid tight end, but being quick enough, being agile enough, being athletic enough at six foot six and a half to also be recruited as a wide receiver, man, that is something that is going to be hard to guard at any program that he goes to. And that but this could be a reason now, obviously, look, you have all of the top teams going after him. You have Texas, Georgia, and Alabama all having official visits. If Louisville's to win this, this might be their biggest recruiting win that I've seen in my lifetime. I'm 24 years old, so bear with me. I haven't uh, been um, around all that long to witness some of the recruiting wins of the 90s and early 2000s. But, man, beating out Georgia, Alabama, 
Texas for the number one tight end in the country, a five-star prospect. Obviously, maybe Ruben Owens could fit into that mix as well. But I wonder how much that may play into uh, Deuce Robinson's decision in terms of that you know, being sought after as a two-way player because – or two-way – a two-sport athlete, I should say, because – Louisville's program is a better baseball program than Alabama by jo- than Georgia, and Texas. Eh, it's more comparable for sure because Texas is very very solid. Um, but over the past ten years or so, Louisville ha- is, has been the better baseball program than all of all three of those programs. So it does make you wonder if they're going to try to use baseball as leverage, or also you know recruiting him as a wide receiver. That's also something uh, I know that he. Uh, made an unofficial visit uh, to the program, I believe, uh, recently. But the the main thing here for the Cardinals is getting him on an official visit and trying to just stay into this designing day. Um, you know, recruiting analysts have said, "Hey, look, there's a lot of you know traction between Deuce Robinson and Louisville. Like this is a real thing. Like Louisville is in the mix. It's going to be a matter of um, you know." trying to do whatever you can to separate yourselves from Georgia, Alabama, and Texas. But overall, Jamar Johnson, um, Deuce Robinson, uh, Roderick Pleasant, Ruben Owens, no surprise that any of those four guys made the freaks list. Also, two offers to keep an eye out on Roderick Pleasant and um, Saquon Bryant. But um, there's going to be a lot of shows between now and the first of the month, Um, a show, at least one show every single day until next Thursday leading up to the Syracuse game. Got a lot of solid content planned for you. Um, Everyone have a great weekend. We are one weekend away from the Cardinals opening up their season up in the New York State playing the Syracuse Orange to open up the year and open up comp play at the same time. So um, if you have any suggestions for the podcast in terms of guests, um, any additions you want to be added to the next weekly mailbag segment, Feel free to uh, send me a DM at defense underscore that's listed in the uh, graphic below. The Locked On Louisville Twitter podcast, or the podcast Twitter page is at LO underscore Louisville that you can check out there. But that's going to wrap up this Friday edition of the show. Everyone have a great rest of your day, and we will see you right back here for a special weekend episode.